Well, hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life, and I'm excited to bring you on another historic tour. Today, we're in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Behind me, you're seeing the very beginning of the Vicksburg National War Memorial. This is a place that I've wanted to come to for years and years and years. We started our historic tour just a couple weeks ago. We started in the 1500s uh, up through the 1600s uh, on the Georgia coast uh, with Fort King George and down into St. Simons. We continued uh, just a few days ago uh, at Fort Morgan, uh, and that started from the Spanish-American War up through World War II uh, in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. And now we're at the site that was the uh, really the final deciding factor in the Civil War uh, with the uh, fall of Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, this was a massive, massive battle in the in the the, the final place really that just broke the uh, Confederate. Uh, the Confederate Army's back, uh, killing the supply lines, and uh, Grant brought 45,000 troops. Uh, they were ready to end the war, and this did it. This is a massive, massive battlefield. There's so much to see. I hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I. So uh, I'm going to start inside the museum and the Welcome Center, and then uh, we'll start touring the park. Well, this is uh, the beginnings of the Visitor Center. It's small, but uh, I'm going to get to see a video, I can't film it, about the siege and I'll share some of the things that I've seen. But this kind of shows a depiction of what life in the trenches, I'm sure this has cleaned up so much. But uh, you can see bits and pieces of camp life, items that the officers would have used. And the locals had built caves to stay away from the shelling. And again, the whole issue here was controlling the Mississippi River because the uh, Confederates had controlled it. And uh, from New Orleans all the way up through Vicksburg and had cut everything off that uh, the Union Army attempted to get above the Mason-Dixon line. So uh, this was... This was a big deal, a very big deal. Well, I just left the, left the museum, saw the video. Oh, this place is absolutely massive. I can't wait to see everything there is to see here. This was a substantial campaign, 45,000 Union soldiers and a battle that lasted for almost two months. And uh, we'll see a little bit of remnants of that. Pull the truck over for just a minute just to give you an idea of some of the monuments that are here. Commemorating those who fought and those who passed. This one is very substantial. This one's dedicated to Minnesota. And you can see going down the road off in the distance and as we continue to drive around, just monument after monument after monument. 30th Infantry and the 4th Infantry. And then you'll see uh, bronze plaques and busts along the way. They are everywhere. Again, this was just such a substantial battle. This was Sanborn. John B. Sanborn. He was the uh, he commanded the Column of the Fourth from Minnesota. And you see these busts all over the place. Another view of that spectacular monument. We're going to go up to the steps here to a place called the Shirley House. This is uh, the only, the only house that survived the battle. And it was a uh, 
headquarters for one of the commanders. Now it's under it's under some renovation now. So we're gonna see. Looks like they're painting it and doing some repairs. But uh, you get a shot of that. Of course, there's the Illinois Monument. Quite a place. And when you look at the grounds here at how you can literally see, I think I can walk over here, I will. You can literally see the, um, the trenches that are still in existence. Look at this. You can see them everywhere. The, the earth is still quite scarred. Nothing's been done to restore it other than to let grass grow on it. And this is where the Union troops were embedded. Going in that direction. This gives you a view of the Shirley House, if you can make it out from 1863. There's the actual home from that period. I apologize for the shadow. And then you can literally see the encampments that were dug in around, around the home. And, uh... That's the home here in front of the Illinois Memorial. And then off to my right is the Shirley House. You can just see how the earth was just cut and torn. And that would have had thousands of troops in it. gives a little bit of a preview into something they refer to that art the honors and uh, this is the Illinois Memorial in 1906 it cost hundred and ninety thousand dollars if you converted that to today's dollars uh, the building of that would have cost 4.6 million dollars let's uh, take a walk this is quite a structure. Look at that. Look at that. Here is a listing of all the... Oh my! The echo in here is something. All the generals and commanders from the period. I'm gonna step back here to the back. And you can just see how massive this is, open to the sky. And then, as you come in the door, you see all along the wall, all those who fought in this campaign cavalry and division after division the thousands and thousands of men who fought in this war and it just goes on and on and on and although a bit weathered Illinois erects this monument in grateful remembrance of the services, the suffering, the sacrifices, and the devotion of her sons who participated on land and water in this campaign and siege of Vicksburg from March 29th to July 4th, 1863. And on it goes. 1906 was the dedication. One of the things I'll share that I find very interesting looking at the opening in the top as the sun moves around it will highlight the various generals who were part of this campaign from the north and that's the view as you go out the door and uh, you look over the campaign fields 
on this peaceful day, I can assure you it was anything but that in 1864. The monument that you see here is actually dedicated to the U.S. Navy who uh, supported the troops that were on land. And you see these just massive, massive monuments. Big hillside, we can't see what's on the other side of the trees now, but uh, quite a substantial fortification from that period. Oh, this is gonna be absolutely amazing. This is, the US, this is the Cairo, the USS Cairo. This was a ironclad, an ironclad that was actually dredged and restored. I think it's the only one of its kind that has survived, and I think almost half of it is original. And uh, there's a museum over here. I can't wait to uh, see what this is all about. Look how much of this has actually been salvaged. And uh, we can actually go and walk inside of it. Oh, this is going to be mind-blowing. But just, uh, just look at this. Isn't this stunning? There were seven of these. This is the USS Cairo. She had six sister boats, 13 cannons, going at nine miles per hour. Look at that. Just look at this. You can see where the chimneys were. Oh, you can actually see the remnants of the um, the paddle wheels in the back. Look at that. The steam-driven paddle wheels. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Steam-driven. There's the steam drums that were used to propel it. And you can actually see some of the timbers, the original timbers that were part of the ship during that period. You can see the frames of the Paddle wheels, that's incredible. Look at that. And look at these timbers, isn't that something? Look at the gun placements here. I don't know if any of these were dredged up. Look at that. 158 sailors and 17 officers were on this, on this ship. Look at that. This was a war machine, wasn't it? Look at that cannon placements front and side look at that oh my goodness this would have been the pilot house up top you can see through the cladding that's still in still there the original cladding how about that what well, i'm just really amazed here it just you can see you know this is replacement timber but yet these turnbuckles here are the original. And then you can see the old oak all down through the bottom, down around the steam engines that is original. So this will give you an idea of the firepower that came up against Vicksburg. 13 heavy cannons. So it had one, two, three, four, five, six, 32 pound, three, 42 pound, but look at the look at the cladding that's still here. It's amazing. Give you an idea of what you had had to face. Not a pretty thing. We're able to walk all the way around it. We'll take a peek as we go on. And you can see the replacement lumber of the sides mixed with the old original timbers. Great view here of the back the bow look at this and then you can see you can see the paddle wheels see the middle there in the middle that would have been the paddle wheels would have been behind the cladding here this will give you an example of where the paddle wheels would have lied near the beer back of the boat look at that that's something that is really rare. I think the only one of its kind that's ever been salvaged. It's quite amazing. 
They've got a museum that we can go into up here. I think that'll be an interesting place to see. Inside the museum now, and there is just a multitude of artifacts that they uncovered when they brought the boat up. Look at this. Look at this. Just tons of items from personal items. Look at that. Clothing. That is amazing. Medicine that was on board. Look at this. I've never seen so much. Look at that. Cooking utensils on and on and on. And then you get into the um, shells. And you can see the various shells that would have been around during that period. Well, as we leave the Cairo Museum, the USS Cairo, we come upon the National Cemetery. Oh, I gotta tell you, this is chilling. I know this is not a happy ending, at least not for all those who fought, but the cemetery holds 17,000 Union soldiers. And the Confederate soldiers, well, they were all buried in the city cemetery. Well, if you want to see much for the Confederate placements, um, you really have to go looking for them. I guess, as you would say, to the victors go the spoil. And uh, the National Park is dedicated to the Union soldiers who fought. But uh, I thought this would be inter interesting to share. This is called the Widow Blakely. And uh, this is a rifled cannon. But I think what's really interesting is to you the placement of where this battery is. And you can drive around and see several, several of these. This was, a, uh, was a, uh, a, a defensive position held by the Confederate soldiers. A seven and a half inch rifled gun. And uh, you're overlooking the Mississippi. Isn't that something? Well, I hope that uh, you enjoyed the tour of the Vicksburg National Historic Battlefield. This really is amazing. I'll share a couple things here. This is uh, all dedicated to the Union Army, and you drive through there and you see, you know, the placement where 45,000 men had been placed. The really interesting thing is when you start looking for the, uh, the Confederate components of this, you, you basically have to drive around outside the battlefield. As a matter of fact, I'm here at one on the banks of the Mississippi, all still national park, and you can see gun placements and little red markers all over the city. What's really interesting is where many of the Confederate batteries and placements had been, you now have homes and there's historical markers out front. But on the banks of the Mississippi, uh, I bid you farewell on this trip. Another piece of history and another reason you got it. I just love RV life. Mm -hmm.